Welcome back to Vancouver Carpenter. Today I'm gonna to cover some of the most common reasons that people strip screws. So I would say one of the first ones is using the wrong size bit. So you need to know the size bits. There's number one, number two, and number three, and they all have different screw sizes. It's very common for people to not have a proper set of drill bits, and so they go fumbling through, say their Pickwick, shout out to Pickwick, which is actually a Vancouver brand, but they go fumbling through to find whatever star or square shaped head they can, and in this case, I have a number one, and it kind of looks like it fits, but when you go start trying to fit it, you can see there's all that slop. But let's just try and drive this screw anyways. Yeah, a lot of room for error. And if I twist the drill at all. So I don't know how many times I've seen people do this to door hinge screws. That's probably the most common place that people will destroy the screws with the wrong size bit with a Phillips. But as soon as we put a number two Phillips on here, which at first looks like it might be too big, but as soon as you try fitting it, it's nice and snug, even though I've totally rounded out this thing. Anyways, let's try that. It's way harder to have any slack in the bit. Like you can see that the screw moves with the drill bit. No problem. And the exact same is going to be true for the number one Robertson bit. We'll just do this really quickly because you've already seen it. As you can see, there's tons of slack here. It doesn't fit at all. And when you try and drive with it, you might get a few turns for a bit. And if you're actually skilled with a drill, no, <laughs> you can see it just starts stripping instantly. So we'll now switch to a number two. And as you can see, when you have a number two, there shouldn't be much slack. There's a little bit of play in this, but it's not bad. And again, if I go up to say a number three, we can see that there's too much slack. It's actually doing the job, but if I switch to a number three, there's much less slack. Although this screw actually has another fairly common problem that messes people up. So I've only had this happen a few times in my career, but once in a while you will get a screw where the slot in the screw is actually not deep enough or it's very slightly oversized. So there will be a whole bunch of play in the drill bit. And you'll notice that as you're trying to drive it, it just keeps flopping out of there and stripping. So if you're a seasoned vet and you've had this happen on a bag of screws, let me know in the comments. I've had this happen twice and I'm sure it was the screws because I can definitely consistently sink a screw pretty much every single time, even with super worn out bits. So yes, it's been twice that I've had bags of screws that have caused me severe grief. And this just happens to be one of them. I've also got a slightly worn out bit, which is another thing that could be a problem for people is having a bit that's way too worn out. Go get yourself a nice pack of, you know, reasonable quality bits, not the cheapest, but not the most expensive. And you'll notice that there's actually a difference. So not only will people often have the wrong size head on their drill bit, they'll also often use a drill bit of the wrong size. Unless you actually need the length of the bit, using a drill bit this long is just gonna cause you grief. It's a fair bit harder to hold everything steady when you've got all this extra bit in the drill. Clearly it's still fairly doable, but you aren't making it easier for yourself. It's much easier to use the appropriate length drill bit. So that's a few of the reasons why your gear choices could be causing you problems, but next it comes to form. So when you're putting a screw in, I would say the number one reason that people struggle if it's not gear is actually that they aren't able to visualize a straight line from the back of their drill, through their drill bit, through the screw. Your pressure has to be totally even. So if your drill is slightly out of square this way or slightly out of square this way or that way compared to the drill bit, like it has to be a dead straight line all the way through the back of that drill to the head of that screw. If it's not, it's gonna slip and start stripping. So let me see if I can make it slip on purpose. I think this is the one that beginners struggle with the most because they have a really hard time seeing if something's square. This might actually be the screw that had the thing that was too short. <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna intentionally have the drill not square. 
right? It's hard to even get it started. And then as soon as you get going, so if you aren't able to visualize that line straight down, it's going to cause you problems. But now, even with a stripped screw and a not very good drill bit, if you're able to visualize that line, no problem. So I don't know if you guys caught it, but I did one last thing there that's a really handy tip to help you make sure you're sinking your screws, and it's also especially helpful when you're pulling screws out, especially old screws. Notice that I put my hand on the back of the drill, so not only do you want to visualize that straight line from the back of the drill through your bit, through your screw, it can also be really helpful to put a little bit of pressure on the back of the drill, especially if you're in awkward positions. So say you're drilling up somewhere high and it's hard to kind of hold everything square, a little bit of pressure on the back of that drill goes a long way. So here's a quick demonstration of how it should look. Notice I'm actually using a little bit of force to get that started so that it has somewhere it's not spinning around. So I also mentioned that it can be a challenge getting screws that are in really deep out. And it gets especially hard if it's say outside and the rain is making the hole start to swell back in and you can't find it. But you just have to put the drill in and twist it until you can feel it lock into that bit. Don't start spinning yet or you're only gonna cause yourself grief. Once you know it's locked in, put a little pressure on the back and you'll be able to pull out even the most stubborn screws unless they are just totally stripped to begin with. Okay, so those are the most common reasons why somebody would be stripping screws these days, but I'm actually old enough to remember the days before cordless tools and before impact drivers. So that's something I didn't mention, but an impact driver, because of the impact feature, forces the drill bit into the head of the screw more effectively than a regular drill. But back when I was a kid and a teenager and in my early 20s, again, cordless and impact drivers they weren't popular and often weren't even around. So we were left using corded drills and that was hard. So it's definitely a lot easier these days, but um, that should cover most of the common reasons why you're stripping screws. Hopefully that helps solve your problem. Yeah, throw away the cheap bits or just save it for your screwdriver, get some decent bits, get a decent impact and make sure you're using the right size bit for the right screw. Anyways, I wanna say thanks for watching Vancouver Carpenter. Hopefully you guys got something useful out of this video. Till the next one.